What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is Nuggets of Truth. We've done a few different videos now on how Jesus is God, yet some still aren't convinced. A lot of people say that Jesus himself said that he was created, therefore he can't be God. Well, let's just read that verse to see if that's true. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's creation. Wow, that sounds pretty condemning. How can Jesus be both God and the beginning of God's creation? Let's go back to the account of the creation story to find out who created everything. John chapter 1 verse 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. We know that Jesus is the Word of God. If you'd like a more in-depth study on how Jesus is the Word of God, check out our video entitled, What or Who is the Word of God, which is under our Nuggets of Truth category. So according to John, nothing was made without the Word of God. And Jesus is the Word of God. Therefore, nothing was made without Jesus. Look at what Jesus says about himself in John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. According to Jesus, before Abraham was, Jesus always was. In other words, Jesus himself is saying that he has no beginning and no end. So then is this a contradiction in scripture? Absolutely not. According to Jesus himself, scripture cannot be broken, John 10, 35. The Lord himself says that he watches over his word to make sure that it performs what he sent it out to do, Jeremiah 1, 12. Therefore, how can scripture be broken or have contradictions? This now begs the question, how can Jesus be both God and the beginning of God's creation? Well, because Jesus is the beginning of God's new creation. Let's go back to the beginning of Jesus' life on earth. John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as the only son from the father full of grace and truth. The word of God became flesh. In other words, God became man. Philippians 2, 5 through 7 puts it this way. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. So Jesus set aside his godliness and took on the form of mankind so that he could save mankind from our sins. Then after his ministry was finished, he died on the cross. After three days and three nights, Jesus rose to life again. This is where we get our answer. Jesus rose as the first of God's new creation. He did not rise as God. He rose as the first of God's creation, his new creation. Look at how Paul explains it to the Colossians in Colossians 1, 13 through 20. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Paul basically just summed up everything I've said so far in this video. Jesus set off his godliness to take on the form of man, so that he could die and rise again as the new creation that we will one day take the form of when we rise in the resurrection. Paul explains this in his letter to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, since we won't be reading the entire chapter, but we'll only be reading from a few verses, I urge you all to read the full chapter on your own so that you can see that nothing was taken out of context. So let's start with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 through 23. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 42 through 45. 
So is it with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. And finally, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 53. I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this imperishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. So. Again, when Jesus rose, he didn't rise as God. He rose as the new creation. Though Jesus set off his godliness, he was, is, and always will be God. It just means he simply did not use his godliness to his advantage, but instead relied on the power of the Holy Spirit instead of his own. Because he knew that as man, we don't have power. We don't have authority. We have that which is given to us, the Holy Spirit the authority of the name of Jesus. So when he was on earth, he didn't rely on his own power and authority, but on the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit, which came upon him when he was baptized by John. According to Matthew chapter three, verse 13 through 18. So when Jesus died, he died as a man. And when he rose, he rose as the new creation that is created in the image of God that Adam lost in the garden. And this is the body that the church will put on, the new created body that Christ already has on, which is why Jesus is the first of God's creation because he is the first to put on the new imperishable body that we will one day put on at the last trumpet in the rapture. So let's just sum everything up for you guys. Jesus wasn't created and said all things were created through him, including the new creation. This is why it's only through him that, that we have everlasting life. John chapter 14 verse 6 and Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Jesus had to put on the form of man, the first Adam, so that when he died and rose again, he could rise as the last Adam, giving more than just eternal life to those who believe in him. Now just as the first Adam's children were born in his image, Genesis chapter 5 verse 3, so are the last Adam's children reborn in, into his image that was lost by the first Adam in the Garden of Eden, 1 Corinthians 15, 47 through 49. So just as we are all sons and daughters of the first Adam, all who believe and follow Christ have become sons and daughters of the last Adam and will also take on his image as we bore the first Adam's image, Romans chapter 8, verse 15. I hope you all enjoy this video and that it made sense and it maybe cleared up some questions that you had about Jesus being the beginning of God's creation. And if it did and you enjoyed it, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.